Hi everybody, I'm here um, on Facebook Live. Now I've just got to get it on the student on my uh, computer so I can see you and your questions. And hopefully it will work. I'm just learning uh, how to do this as we're all learning many things. I don't know if I can turn my camera this way. I'm just going to try. No, it's just telling me to rotate your phone. You can't turn your phone while recording. Okay, all right. So we got this. Hello, Janine. Hi, Janice. Uh, we've got lots of people watching. Robert, I'm just going to pass you the phone. I'm just going to turn it around. Okay, so this is the frame I'm going to be working on. It's my husband, Robert, and I'm going to pass him the phone. And he can, uh, you can hold it that way, I guess. Um. Okay, so Robert, you can see my frame good and everything, can you? Yeah. I'm here like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just got to grab my hook. So I'm going to show you a couple of things today. The first thing I why I'm going to be working on that. Uh, might not be able to ask questions. I uh, think maybe we'll take questions. If you don't have sound, you have to turn the sound on on your computer. Um, uh, I think, is can everybody hear? Yeah, everything's good. Just let me know, somebody, that it's all good. Okay. Sharon, Shannon, Cahill is there. Cal, that's great. Okay. All right. Okay, we've got over... Got over 150 people watching. So I what I want to show you now is my Sunday drive. So can you hold the camera just straight, Robert? Yeah, thanks. Um, so this is a palette that I use from Briggs and Little Yarn uh, from Mike Mike Little and his family in New Brunswick, and they mill yarn um, and then they dye it in a special color for us. So this is a palette that I love. So that's the palette I'm going to be using today. And the design that I'm choosing, I just want you to, I want you to see that, just so you know what I'm up to. Now, I'm going to also be mixing some cloth. So this is like an old, an old jacket or an old blanket. And this is some I bought off the bolt. And I've got some of our European cream dyed in light blue and in cream. All right. So the design I'm going to make today is similar to this. It's similar to Sail the Day. And that's kind of a play on the whole idea of seize the day because, and this kit is available online if any of you want it. Last time people wanted a, a kit. And so what I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to talk about hooking water. I'm going to talk about hooking the sail and I'm going to do a little bit of sky and a little bit of landscape. So we're going to have four quick lessons. You got that? And I'm going to draw the design on. Oh, I'm getting myself a new Sharpie marker. There we go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, and we'll do some close-ups and, and things. Last week, uh, we had to social distance because Angela was doing the thing. Now, Robert and I are home together, so he can come in and do some close-ups for you. And uh, we'll do our very best to give you a, a good lesson today. It's just looking for a ruler. I don't have one, so I'll just take out my little order. My little order. Thing, and I am just going to draw off so I'm not going to make this too big and why have I chosen to do a sailboat well I think it is important um, uh, to me and it, uh, to, like the whole idea of a sailing ship has a big story in my life because I had a favorite uncle and that uncle was my Uncle Donald. And he was everybody's favorite uncle. It was hard to compete. I loved my other uncles too. But this was my Uncle Donald right here. And when I was 15 years old, my Uncle Donald took me to Petty Fort and to Paradise, two villages that I grew up in um, that, that uh, my father and he and his family grew up in. And I went there and... 
it was the first time I think that I ever realized that I was happy on my own, that I could be, it was an abandoned village, you know, so I was on, on sitting on these big hills overlooking Placentia Bay and it was so beautiful. And I, I always am thankful that my uncle took me there. And I grew up with very romantic notions of that place because my father always said, uh, he always told me about going to the store and getting candy and he always told me about playing on Mardi Gras Island and all those beautiful things and and so I had this romantic notion and and when I got there when I was 16 it was like I was 15 or 16 it was like oh my gosh this place is really beautiful I still have a piece of marble from the altar that that was there so that there was a big abandoned church there and of course the altar was shattered all over the structure like it was all was there was a big roof and a bell and like eight or ten posts that were holding up the roof and there was the there was there was the altar shattered so I brought a piece of the altar home for my father it was just a transforming experience in my life so I had a lot of romantic notions about that and I said to my uncle Donald you must have loved it here. And he said, loved it here. The first, when I was 16, he said, the first schooner that came in that harbor, I got on it and went to work. He just couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> and so this this little sailboat and this little schooner uh, is what reminds me. So today I'm going to do a little sailboat and I'm just going to draw it on. You And, you know, you can just draw right on your backing. We sell backing just, just for you know, plain backing, and you can just draw right on it with a Sharpie marker. So I'm just going to draw that schooner because, you know, we have these family stories, and for me, every schooner that I draw is Uncle Don. Oh, I'm going to change that. I'm just going to change it to a sailboat. There we go. And I'm going to draw a nice little hill here in the background. It's going to be a lot like the design that you see. Yeah, we'll bring it out through the other side. There we go. I'm gonna put some sky in there. I've got less sky in here, so I, I, yeah, there we go. Let's bring her down a bit, bring the hill down. Okay, and then we got the water. So it's pretty simple, a couple of little houses. So if you wanna design a rug yourself, what do you do? You get your backing and you get a Sharpie marker and you decide your design. A design could be as simple as this, just a square with a circle inside. It's really easy. Okay, now, the first thing I need to do is I need to get a bit of black wool. So in all my preparations, because Robert will show you the nice pile of wool I have there, I forgot to put out some black. I've got to get my scissors. Okay, so the first little tip I'm going to show you is that when you get a skein of wool, I always cut, cut it on both ends. This lesson's going to be about 20 minutes, just so you know. And I'm going to go around to the little, to all the different parts. Oh my gosh, we've got 493 people watching, Robert. That's nice. That is nice. California, France. How do you know? Tennessee. It says here. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. France. Glasgow, I love France. It's the most beautiful mm -hmm. country in the world. Besides Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it is really beautiful. Um, I don't know if it's... I shouldn't say one country is more beautiful than another. Every country has its own beauty. But I do love France. Okay, so... I'm going to, uh, so the good thing about rug hooking, there's so many good things about rug hooking, but one of the good things about it is that if you, when you draw it on, you make a little mistake, you can change it, you can go back and change it, or you can change it when you hook it. So if you get a kit from me, don't worry about following the lines exactly, okay? That's not what this is about. If you want to go outside the lines, if you want to wear, use the white where, where the red is, you just go ahead. That's what I think. Go ahead and do it. All right. Now I'm going to outline these sails because I want to show you about mixing whites. I think that's a really good lesson. So Robert, can you come in close so they can see? And I just wanted to say that I know it might seem like I'm doing something for you by hosting this, but I got to tell you, you're doing something for, for me by being here and watching it and by hooking rugs. Um, it's really, 
it's really good for me to get to do this and, and to spend some time with you today. I really appreciate that you're here. Is the sound working, Robert? No, it must be. Must be. Everybody nope. says it's, it's good. Okay, everybody's good? All right. One lady said she couldn't hear, but I don't know how to tell her. Uh, yeah, that's okay. She'll she'll have to play with it and figure it out. Okay, so I've outlined the sail. And you can see that when I outline, I skipped some holes because I don't want this to be a big black solid outline. Okay, now I'm going to outline... I'm going to outline, I'm going to do a little bit more outlining because outlining sort of defines your drawing, right? It's a very important part of hooking the rug. You need to, you need to outline. Oh, how do I stop her? Okay, it was the sound was coming through on the computer. All right. So now I'm defining the area that will be my rocks. And you can see how loosely I'm outlining. And I'm just going to go a little bit slow because one woman emailed me and she said, Deanne, you hook so fast that when my niece takes a lesson from you, she just feels really intimidated. So how's this? Just, you know, it's not about the speed at which you do it. Just, that's just my natural way. That's just not what it's about. Now I'm going to outline the little boat down here so we can show you a little bit about that. And I need to outline, I don't need to outline the sea. I'll show you a little house after. And I'm going to go over here. And I just need to define the sky and outline the rest of this. Sometimes when I'm using Briggs and Little, I double it up. So that Sunday Drive palette, you can use it as singles or doubles. So now I'm doubling it up a little bit just so you can see that. There we go. There's a double. The cameraman has his hand over my head, so I've got to get him to move it a little bit. It's making me nervous. Lady asked if you always use yarn to... No, no, I use cloth. Outline. Uh, no, I use cloth lots of times. But when I use cloth, I often use a number six cut. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and ask them. Just defined. I, you know, I know I, I probably shouldn't waste your time doing this, but I really need to see this other side of this sail. So I'm going down the straight line. Whoops, having trouble catching that in black. Okay. Because if this is better defined for me, I think I can show you more. When do you use wool cloth and when do you use yarn? It's a personal choice. You can. You, it depends on how you want it to show. I find wool yarn, um, wool cloth is a little bit more distinctive in a rug sometimes. So and it's wider and bigger than yarn. Um, there isn't a there isn't a right and a wrong about when you use yarn and when you use wool cloth. It's kind of like when I feel what I feel. I want to show you how to make a wiggly line now. So you're going up, you're going up, and then to turn, you just move your hook over. Okay? That's all there is to it. And we're going to make this line a little bit wiggly because the sail is moving. So, you know, my Uncle Donald was really happy getting on that boat when he was 16. And that sail was moving. Okay, so this will get us through, I think. Outlining, like I said, outlining is a very important part of hooking your rug. Because it really is your drawing. It's your foundation. What cut do you use most often? Six and eight I use are the cuts I use most often. How do you keep from pulling up only one strand when you use it double? Uh, yeah, it's tricky. I'll do double over here so you can see. When I go down, I wrap it around like that. See? Just watch when I bring up, bring up my loop. See? I'm just grabbing the end. I'm not going down and catching a loop. That's how you pull up a strand. When I go down, I'm going down on the side, and I'm pulling it up. Whoops, pulled out the loop. That's another mistake people make a lot. Uh, I'm catching the edge. 
You see, I've got the edge of the yarn. So I'm not pulling up one strand. I So I am actually only catching one strand. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Now, what shall we do first, Robert? Will we do the sail? Will we do the... I think finish the, the bottom of the boat. You want me to put some red in the bottom of the boat? It's up to you. Okay. All right, we'll get some red for the bottom of the boat. Um, got some red yarn here. Very simple little, same kind of yarn, just, just a, a red Briggs and Little. I'm going to use double, and we're going to... So, I want to show you one thing. Someone asked if you ever use silk jersey. She you knows you use wool jersey. Yeah, if I had some. I haven't had yeah. any, but I'd love some. You haven't had any lately? No, silk You've jersey. used it before? Uh, no, I never don't. No, I've never it. had it, but mm -hmm. I would gladly use it. So when you when you have an area like this, you want to get right in, like a point. You want to get right into the point, okay? Because that those points and those areas help define. So that's one tip, all right? And now I'm pulling this up two at a time. Now, what I'm going to do, and just Robert, you can follow me over here if you like. I'm going to go over here. You want to? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get a little piece of red cloth because I want to highlight. So I'm going to take this red cloth and I want to highlight uh, something. So I'm going to take the red cloth and I'm going to just hand cut one strip in quite a narrow cut. And for that little boat, I just want to use some of the cloth as well and mix it in there. So the the thing for going back to the question about the cloth and the yarn, how you want to use them is you want to use them in contrast to each other. Someone said I just got a poppy beginner kit oh, today. Good. If I were to try, to try a floor mat, do you line the back? On yeah, the floor you can. It's a nice way. I think it's a great way of preserving floor mats if you like, if you like, if you put another piece of cloth all over the back. But you know, you don't have to. They will last for many years without that. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to do the bottom of the boat. You're going to use a little cloth in there and you're going to contrast it. And I'm going to go way down just to see. So this, this kit is called Sail the Day. How high are your loops? My loops are about, uh, they're, you know, they're quite high. When I first pull up a loop, comes up, that's, how high is that, Robert? Is it, you think know. that's half an inch, right? And then the next one I pull it up and it pulls it down, yeah, right? I so they're half, I don't think they're half. Maybe a, eight, yeah, quarter. if you look at them now, they're about a quarter of an inch high. But when I first pull them up, they go a little higher. What now, weight are you using in the air? Oh, uh, this is like a, a knitting yarn like a, a spores but uh, it's like um what is it? i forget the name of it i'm just, sorry just hand cut that again someone wants to watch that again okay you crinkle it up okay i just got a fold of in four and then i'm cutting it okay now i want to get to the sales because i want to go through the lesson so i want to make sure i show you the four areas so here we go i've got white wool cloth I've got a little bit of kind of cream sari. And I've got some thick merino that I like to use. And I also have a piece of gray in here that's not supposed to be there. Um, I have a uh, white, uh, an off-white yarn that is a three-ply. Okay, so this is the sail that we're going to make. So see these wavy lines here? Well, one of the things you can do is you can go in like that. And just draw yourself a couple of lines. How's the cameraman doing, everybody? They said I was good. Did they? Oh, uh, somebody did. Good. So I'm going to use that line and then I'm going to create a nice little area. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to do it again over here. And I'm going to choose one of my wools to do that. I've chosen 
the white uh, the white three ply. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go right up to the point with my cloth. And remember I showed you when we did that about getting in at the points are really important. So that's going to be one end coming up there. Well, no, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to leave the end down and I'm going to hook another loop and sort of hide that end in there so I have a, a bigger point. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to start coming down and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to join these two colors together. And you can see that one is cream and one is a little bit lighter. And I want that because that shows that there's kind of light hitting that sail. So, you know, in my mind, Uncle Don is on this boat and he's 16 years old and he's heading to work out on the Grand Banks fishing. Okay. So that's, you, you need to be making things that you relate to. I think that's really important. And when I'm designing hooked rugs, I'm really thinking about my life. I'm thinking about the people that I know. And I'm creating based on that. Okay, so there's two yarns in there now. Now I'm going to take the Sari silk. This is beautiful fabric to work with. I love working with Sari. But I know I... It's, I, what I'm going to do is I know a way to make it go a little longer and last a little longer. And if you open up that sari and you give it a snip and you give it a rip, you get twice as much out of one strip. So I'm going to take that sari and I'm going to hook it kind of a, a little area of color. So... And then, what was the other yarn? Oh, I've got some nice, I've got one strand of Big Fat Merino. Now, the thing you could remember about hooking a sail is, so we're going to use four different wools in this little triangle. The thing you can remember about hooking a sail is that um, you can have just one little bit of a yarn in, in a white. Like, you could have, like, just this much. And it would still be valuable. So we're going to take that white and that's all we're going to use of that white is that little bit right there. And that gives you a real sort of point of interest in the creams. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the other two yarns and I'm going to fill in the whole thing because my interesting work is already done. Okay. And then that's all I'm going to do is just go and if I go back and I just keep... You know, and I'm not going to just keep switching back and forth one to one. Sometimes I'll use two of this and one of that. It'll be fine. So this is the sail. And again, when I go out to that point, that's a really important spot. Okay, we've got 654 people watching. Isn't that wonderful? I hope you're all at home hooking. And really, I hope you're staying at home. I'm doing everything that I can. Is a wool one, two, or three ply? Uh, we use all, I use, I use every, every pie imaginable. There's, if it's wool, it's good to use. Yeah. This wool that I'm using for this area is can, three ply. Can you use sari on a floor mat? You can use sari on a floor mat. However, you have to remember that when you're hooking a floor mat, if you use a lot of different textures, they're going to wear differently. If you use all the same texture, it's going to wear the same all over. So, um, it's going to, you know, it's not going to have the same patina. It, it'll flatten out. But yeah, you can use anything in a floor mat. But because you use different textures, some areas will get uh, flatter than others. Do you always do the interesting work first? No. Just do it whatever. Just whenever. No, I don't because then, you know, might feel dull. Okay, so there is my little, little sail. And you can imagine the rest of this. Now I'm going to... Um, go over here and work on these little houses. So I'm going to get maybe Robert to switch to the other side. Do you always do a focal point interesting area in a piece before you fill it in? Well, focal point is more about design than about hooking. So I would say that I always uh, try to have a focal point in my rug. 
So, but I like people to be able to move around the rug and find interesting things. So like, you know, obviously the sailboat is the main focal point, but these two little houses over in the corner, well, they're important too. And they draw people into the mat. So what I'm going to do here is this is, I'm basically, when you hook a little house like that, you're basically hooking a little triangle and then a little square. You're not outlining it. I'm not outlining this house, no. Too small. It's too small. You could outline this house with a little detail, but you don't need to. Okay, so now for this for this house, I've used a hand-dyed yarn that's a merino twist. And there we go. And then there's a little red house in it too, I think. So I'm going to make a little red house, and I'm going to make the little red house only out of cloth. And then, so that's, again, back to the question, when do I use cloth? When do I use yarn? It's contrast. Lady said she missed the beginning. Can you quickly say why those loops are loosely? What loop? Oh, those loops? Yeah, uh, the spoke. outline? Because I don't want the outline to be heavy and strong. I want you to see the whole picture. I don't want you to see a whole bunch of black lines. So that's why. So a little house is just a triangle on top of a square. Okay? I know a lot of, of these people. Angle. Do you know a lot of oh, these yeah. people? Good. How do you know them, Robert? I know them from different places. <laughs> What's he doing? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. That's nice. Okay, so there's our little houses. Now I'm going to get a roof color, and I'm, and for the purpose of this, because I'm making it, you could you could use the black yarn. It will be perfect. And see how rough they look. So I, they are rough looking, aren't they? But it's not about the way it looks now. It's about the way it's going to look. So I've got an old sweater here, arm of a sweater, and I am going to cut some rounds couple of rounds of an old sweater and just going to cut the end see how that works okay and then I'm just going to put sort of this is just like the idea of a roof so we get a couple of little roofs in there all right lady asked about workshops but she'll have to just call the studio or uh, yeah you can you know. go online my, I've got my burlap scissors there. I'm in trouble. I got here. I got my wool scissors. Um, Your thing keeps freezing for somebody. Uh, that would have to do with their internet connection, I think. Okay. So, um, where? So this is just like a little intonation of a roof. Make sense? All right. Okay. Now, when I hook around those hills, I'm going to reshape these houses a little bit more so that they get stronger. All right. Now, we've got some rocks. So, I'm going to take this beautiful cloth here that my sister Sharon gave me. And I'm going to fold it. And it's a tweed. It's a herringbone tweed, and I'm going to cut it. You could cut this on the cutter just as easily. Was that a wool sweater? Uh, which, this? The, one, this? the black one. The black one was a wool sweater. Yeah. I'm just going to move it and put it back because we won't need any more of that. And I'm going to get a little bit of gray tweed. So we've got some brown and some gray. It's a knit sweater, too. Somebody's yeah, it's asking. a knit sweater. Yeah. yeah. Someone asked about felting wool, but that's something different. You felt wool by washing it and drying it, usually. That's it? Yeah. Okay. So, for the rocks, so I know this is a little rocky area right here, right? So now I'm going to put in my ones like this. Just, I'm going to hook in some little areas, but I'm going to go all the way down. And they're just... Somebody wants the camera... Turn this way. Odd shaped. We can't turn the camera that way. It Is makes it go not? upside down. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Good 
There we go. Someone wants to see it from underneath, too. Is this a Do good you want to get down there? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody is, wants is it, to see it from underneath. Well, I, I, think, this is sort I think we better focus on, 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 the, top this, on the top for a bit. Right May, maybe at. afterwards we'll show underneath. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going up here with the, tw the herringbone tweed. And I'm just kind of creating little areas. So, we've got a couple of little areas of that herringbone tweed. Going to put a little poke of it over here. I'm also, it's not going to happen in, I drew this by hand, so I'm also going to need a little bit in here because there's, you can see a little bit of the sail in, through, in between the sails. All right, now I've got a gray. What's it supposed to be, that color? It's rocks. This is rocks. Okay. So now I'm just going to fill this in. So... What I'm trying to show you is that you do a couple of little points. Like in the sail, we had some merino and some sari that bring in dress. Here we used a gray tweed and a, and a brown tweed. And now, and if you just use those as, as little areas of interest, then you, you can fill in. Then you can fill in. Are you snipping to create texture? Um, I, you know what? I'm going to have to wait and ask, ask questions at the end. Is that okay? <laughs> Cause I can't sort of, um, my we'll train get, of thought we'll is get getting them. all confused. Yeah. Sorry about that. We'll try and answer some of your questions at the end. So I'm trying to fill in this little area right here with the grays. There we go. So the point is, is that. If you, if you do a couple of little marks, now there's a problem here. You see what's happened here is this looks like a U and that's going to really distract. That's going to really distract you from seeing this as rocks. So I'm going to pull this, some of this out right here. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to add this in again. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to go back here. Got the gray tweed. Now, do I pull out a lot? No, I don't. I don't pull out very much. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. That's still struggling a bit, but I'm going to go back up here and see if I can get a little bit in. Okay, that should work. Um, sometimes I clip the loops to create a little texture. All right, now I'm gonna take this gray. I'm gonna jot down the questions. No, the, uh, c the camera's shaking, okay, so sorry. see, the, the argument's starting. <laughs> this is not gonna last very long. Someone emailed me earlier and said, it'll be interesting having Robert behind the camera. And I said, uh, well, there might be a little bickering because that's our nature, but we're good to each other and love each other. But there we go. So there's our rocks, all right? All right, so now I'm going to, so I told you that I'd show you a little water, a little hills, a little rock. So there's our little rocks. And I'll try and finish this rug in the next couple of days and post it for you. All right, so the hills, I'm using my Briggs and Little palette, which I love. I love this woody moss. Like, what's not to love about this here? It's gorgeous. And I'm using this gorgeous plaid. And I'm just going to show you a little bit about a back hill, how you do a back hill. And I'm using a forest green. Anything else I want? And then in the foreground, I'm going to use this sort of a lighter moss color that we have. Is that lighter? Yeah. Yeah. That's from the Briggs and Little palette. Yeah. Just making sure here. All right. So in this back hill, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double up a Briggs and Little. And I'm going to. Kind of start a line. So I did a little line, but then I'm turning back on that line. Okay. All right. 
then I'm going to mix this in. You when you you want to blend, so you want to bring your greens that are fairly close together in color, and you want to bring them together, and you want to hook really tightly and close to each other. Okay. And I'm coming down the hill. I lived on a hill when I was growing up. And I still sort of see myself as living on the hill. All right. So, and there now, just watch what this plaid does. That's this plaid right here. It's an over dyed. I've had it for years, kicking around. So, it's just an old blanket over dyed. It creates light in the hills. Okay. Over here, it creates a little depth. So the different parts of the plaid blanket do different things. All right, so that's a little lesson on the hills. Now I want to show you the sea. And we're going to use two colors. Yeah, do you want me to move that out of there? Mm. Yeah, okay. All right. We're going to just use these. We've got a royal blue kind of slubby, and I've got uh, the the blue from the marine from the uh, uh, Sunday Drive palette. And I'm going to throw a little fleece in here. Okay. I just got some fleece and then a merino stream. So I'm just going to mix these up. So no cloth in this, all right, in this ocean. All right, when I hook the ocean, I'm going to go right up to the edge of the boat. and down to the left back to the right follow your path up over down back to the left okay it's a nice little path now your inclination is as if you have four things is to go one two three four one two three four one two three four don't do that it's just too predictable Okay, just keep going. How long are we been on here, Robert? We should wrap it up probably. Okay. Um, I don't know. Eleven minutes, maybe. You gotta. You, you, we were asking. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know when Angela's the camera woman, she just does whatever I say. <laughs> Get Angela. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we've got that royal blue. Now, what I would do with this is I would, this this marine blue, I would, it might not be called marine blue, so I don't know. It's the Sunday Drive palette. I would take this and I would use it in two or three different areas, okay? But I'm not going to do that now for this lesson. All right. Now I'm going to take the fleece and I'm, just going to pull a piece up off, okay? Now, a lot of people take fleece and they hook it like this. And it ends up being lumpy and bumpy. You want to take it and pull it nice and filmy, okay? And do it like that. And that, again, look how beautiful that is. Oh, love that. Okay. So a lot of times when I'm here alone, that's how it is. I'm just hooking and I'm thinking... Just thinking away about the, you know, how the beauty of the color and how it works. So I'd probably move that over here. And, and I try and probably thicken it up in places so that you notice it. So a lot of times with this, I'm working in two areas, like one area, two areas. All right. Okay. Now I've got this kind, it's called, uh, it's just like a... a a slob but it's a thinner slob so I'm gonna fold that over and I'm just gonna bring that up and I'm gonna bring it up a little higher okay so there we go all right so there's your ocean now I've got merino stream and it's kind of got some dark green in it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to use that in kind of a long line. Okay. 
over here. And that's setting me off to a really good start for finishing this ocean. It's going to be a kind of a deep marine blue. Okay, so we've done the four areas that I talked about. We did uh, the water, the sail. We did some of the back hills. We did a little house. We did some rocks. And I think uh, we've got time, uh, you know, uh, another day to do some other areas. Like maybe some other day we'll do a lesson on skies. Do you want to do the bottom? Like just oh, show yeah. Do you want to show the, the bottom? Just, sure. Just do another piece of wool. Okay. Do another ocean or something. Okay. Or what are you going to put in? Yeah, okay. Whatever. It's all good. I think she just wants to see the bottom of the rug. No, she's, what? how you hook. Okay, how I'm holding it. Yeah. All right. So here's my hand. Bring my end up. And I'm pinching it. I'm going along with it, right? Does that make sense? You grab it with the hook. What size hook somebody asked? Uh, I use a, it would be considered a, a medium hook. And it's not you, a big hook. I could just show them if they like yeah, to see it. I showed it before. Okay, awesome. If you if you do a black piece on one side and then on the other, like you don't, you cut the wool. You don't use the same strand no, going all the way across. You can see on the back. No, I don't use the strands on the back. I try not to. So I think uh, I think we're pretty much done. I could take maybe four or five questions if you want it. Could your cameraman move to your other shoulder <laughs> to see you actually stitching? I don't know. Try that. I'll go over here and you, you stitch again. Okay, I'll do a little stitching here. A little hooking. All right. There we go. Do you have those What's hooks to on sell? The hook? Somebody said. Uh, we there. don't have this particular hook, but we have a studio hook that has this size on it. Um, I've had this one since I learned how to hook rugs. This, uh, the only, the thing that's wrapped around my hook is a grab on a pin. So everybody, I want you to make sure that you're staying home, you're staying safe and, uh, and you're following all your health authorities and all, all their, all, and your government and what they're telling you to do. And, uh, really thank you for being with me. I really appreciate it. I will take this, um, I will take this, uh, Facebook uh, video and I will post it on wool cake which is now free for everybody there's a lot of videos on there and uh, I'll do that all right thank you bye bye see you Robert did, did we, did, I think we're gonna stop end it, it. Yeah, didn't no, stop <laughs> there we go all right I'm gonna finish hang on where we are all right there we go hi everybody I'm gonna finish Thanks a lot for listening to me. Uh, and uh, Patty McCarroll, thanks you, Robert. See you guys. Take care.